Um, this is quite a different project, um, but equally important. Um, firstly, this site, uh, I think, is a, is a really remarkable location. Um, it faces a, a wetland uh, or an intertidal zone. This is a, an indigenous reserve. Um, and although this drawing suggests, or this, this obviously from the list, but uh, it suggests that this is highly structured, um, you know, suburb essentially, that's not really the experience. This is a, a gravel road. Um, and basically we have, a, there's a character of buildings in this place um, that often have a very fence here and a holiday shack at this end. And then we have a central area, which is where the family Retreats from the, the afternoon wind and the sun and, and often recreation and family gatherings happen there. This, um, we thought that was a really beautiful lifestyle and it's an area that I know well from my childhood and, and um, I saw that as, as eminently valuable. Another really beautiful thing about this site um, is that the, the family owned, uh, I think this property, um, and they walk on here for their sort of barbecues and, and retreats and, and sort of dreamed of owning it. Then they met the owners and eventually they capitulated and they acquired the land. The experience of the site is really important as well. We have the, the sort of water, then we have reeds, then through here is um, tea tree, like a dense tea tree on the, on the bank. And then we go into this dry coastal eucalypt forest. Um, and, and we've really sought to um, resonate with that, that rhythm in terms of the scale and the relationship between the two structures, um, and also in terms of texture and material. So I think they are the quintessential elements of, of this project. Uh, the brief was quite complex, and, and there are a lot of um, discussions between the family, the entire family, and, and mostly me, but Kate as well. Um, and we sort of talked about the type of lifestyle they have and they, they, they're they quite a bookish academic family. Um, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Um, and we created this sort of long sort of bookcase that became a sort of spine of their life. And I'm very interested at the moment, particularly in terms of these interstitial spaces where we, we don't have corridors, but we have little spaces where you can place a chair and sort of it becomes the space for a day or, or a month or whatever it might be. Um, and then we created, you know, the, I think the relationship between the two buildings and this, what then becomes a sort of sacred space is very important. I might just skip through the drawings because they're not particularly interesting. Um, so here, I think you can see that we, we tried to create a, a, a very simple sliding screen, which is the, the shed building, which was for family gatherings, um, the short-term accommodation, um, and these all slide back. Um, this is the entry to the site. Um, so I think it's very important, especially with relatively remote buildings, that you have a sense of arrival the semiotics of the of the architecture are clear. It's a, it sends us a legible message, and there's also this nice little play, um, which Esmond Dorney sort of um, I learnt about, just the, the sort of going into the cloud and into the space and defining that zone, and essentially um, by creating these two formal elements that surround the natural landscape, we can kind of then appreciate the the texture and, and um, character of what you know what's rarely seen as a you know highly desirable landscape certainly in in my youth it wasn't sort of scrub was not desirable but i've always thought it was very beautiful so it becomes a sort of pattern for shadow and it has some sort of resonance at this at the different scales there's this sort of topographic scale but there's this sort of fine detail of the grasses and then you have the shadows of the trees joinery and all elements sort of they these people had the capacity to um, buy sort of any product, you know, really that they could want in a, in a residence, but they very much wanted the Tasmanian character. There was a focus on craft over product. Um, and so everything's oak 
everything's sort of local. <laughs> Those tiles are local. No. Um, and yeah, a, a, a sort of relationship of interior and exterior was really important and a very legible structure so that we could see the fluctuations of the day. Also had a collaboration with Simon Anker making this bed for them. Um, and it's, it's just a simple piece of infrastructure for life that gives us a beautiful sort of comforting reference point to this extraordinary dynamic landscape. I've finished. No <laughs> um, the, the envelope. So it's basic, there's an out, there's an outdoor covered area within that main pavilion. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So I don't know if I've got a good image of that. And those relationships, just so yeah. Um, this is a big steel canopy that so overhangs. Okay, yeah. yeah. And where's the prevailing wind from in this? So they're facing west, is that right? Uh, the aspect. Can we go to the back? Yeah, sure. So basically, it's the, like the wind is, is is from the water essentially. Yeah, so, so yeah. that's that's like this is our little protected zone, and that pattern that's why that's is right. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then that's from yeah, like I mean, instead of creating the, the sort of lawn and, you know, often an umbrella and things, we wanted to let, you know, I, I wanted them to be able to engage, well, they already had, or to allow that relationship to be maintained. And Is it a case that the fabric is either open or closed, but it can't be both? So do the walls open and close, or are they either open or closed? Um, when I, 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 I did write a little thing about them being open. So these are slide, sliding screens that we do have. These are batten screens that are open. These are sliding screens that are opaque um, on the fibre cement sheet. So yes, they're, they're, it's a series of sort of bales it's that you have. Really but it, it would, I really like the idea that we go from sort of containment. This is a, a landscape element, this concrete wall. Um, but then, and all this, this has wings on it and all the services are in here, but uh, that's completely open. You know, this, this is in glazing. These are batten screens, and then we sort of get to completely solid. So I think that's what I was. It's one of the sort of um, not an aside, but um, just those elements that sort of preoccupied us, and I think they were they are clear in the in the final outcome. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I read that it was passively cooled and heated by the fireplace. Yeah. I was just wondering what the thermal comfort is inside the house with that. Uh, we have really large apertures. There's lots of cross ventilation, so you can basically turn it into a, a canopy um, with thermal mass, and um, it's all double glazed and highly insulated and all those things. So it's very comfortable. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, it's always um, interesting to like you know, mm. like, no, please do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you've talked about realising there's two buildings for, for a really affordable budget pandemic yeah. and yeah. the society. So I'm interested in the strategies that you deployed to, to achieve that. Mm. I think that's really important. That is it's hugely important. Obviously, you know, we, we work in a smaller economy in Tasmania to the rest of Australia. And having um, an approach which allows us to procure buildings cost effectively is really important. Um, so generally, that's about minimising labour on site. Um, we also had, I have a very good relationship with Simon Cunningham, who's the, the builder for this. He's sort of retiring, unfortunately, but he's done a beautiful job. But he was also very key um, in acquiring materials prior to the build and storing them and checking with me. And that relationship was very important. Yeah, and we had also slab down light steel frame uh, and then we're sort of filling in the gaps, and that, that's a, a good sort of technique. I could talk about that for way too long, <laughs> but it is a, it's absolutely a huge preoccupation of our firm, in making sure that we can achieve what we set out to achieve and, and the way that we do that. And essentially, we, we see that um, certainly from when I began practising, um, materials are relatively cheap and labour is expensive. So every time we look at... A, heavy carpentry we know that's expensive and we know that everyone has to be informed about what that's going to cost obviously joiner is expensive as well um so yeah thank you for sharing that that's uh, that is that pavilion sorry just to clear this up quickly yeah. the pavilion is 
work at home. Yes. Accommodation. Yep. So essentially, there's an office in here. Um, we've, we've done some other little built in joinery which is all out of plywood. It's lined in plywood. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you.